Well, it's been a crazy few weeks or months in Washington and got even crazier today. Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz this afternoon announced that he's going to be resigning very soon. But this morning, House Speaker Paul Ryan said the GOP is still focused on passing their agenda. I realize that there's a lot in the media these days that doesn't seize up Congress. That doesn't stop us from doing our jobs. I just think it's very important that people know that we can walk and chew gum at the same time. And sure, drama is not, not helpful in getting things done, but we're still getting things done. Are you? Drama, drama, drama. Speaker Ryan just might be right. In the midst of all the sideshows, the House Ways and Means Committee this morning held a hearing on tax reform. And with the Koch brothers appearing to be throwing their weight behind the president's tax plan, could the GOP actually be able to pass a major tax code overhaul by the end of this, this year? Here now joining me, it's Ohio Republican Congressman Jim Jordan, also a member of the Freedom Caucus. Welcome to the show, Congressman. Good to be with you today. Uh, so let's talk about this a little bit. What does sure. Congressman Chaffetz's resignation uh, do for the tenor within your party, within Congress, and with the Russia investigation? Oh, he, he's, he's been an outstanding uh, leader of the uh, Oversight Committee. Uh, he's still going to be there for uh, a while yet. And uh, we'll keep doing our work, doing our oversight, and doing our government reform work. Uh, the uh, Lord knows the, uh, uh, the federal government needs reform, needs streamlining, and everything else. So uh, we'll continue to do that. And then there will be a new chairman uh, determined at some point later this summer, I assume. And who decides that? Steering committee. Yeah. yeah. And Not who do you think it's going to be? Members. I mean, it's too early to tell. Uh, uh, the steering committee makes that determination, and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens at that point. All right, let's talk a little bit about the investigation. It seems like uh, Democrats are a little bit more enthusiastic than Republicans about the appointment of special counsel uh, Robert Mueller. How do you feel about it? Was he the best choice? Look, I have an open mind. We'll see. He's had an outstanding career uh, serving our country. I will tell you the one major interaction I had with former Director Mueller was uh, frankly kind of disappointing from, from my standpoint. Uh, it was about four years ago when the IRS targeting scandal broke. Yeah. It had been in the news for several weeks, and we happened to have Director Mueller in front of the Judiciary Committee, and I asked him a series of questions, and he couldn't answer anything about the investigation. It was at that time the most important story in the country. You had an agency with the power and the might of the IRS systematically targeting people for exercising their First Amendment free speech rights. Yeah. And he couldn't tell me who the lead investigator was, how many agents were on the case, did he put his best team on the case, a, a, a case of this magnitude that the president at the time had said was, was critically important, that then Attorney General uh, Holder said, we're going to get to the bottom of this, and the FBI director couldn't tell me anything okay, about well, it. Do you think that was obstruction or incompetence? Because I, I think there's an important distinction there. I don't know. All I know is I know he's had an outstanding career, but the one interaction I had was yeah. very disappointing. So we'll see. Uh, what I do know is I want to get all the information. I, I want to get not, I want to get the full memo that was the Comey memo, but not just that memo. What yeah. took place around it? I'd like to know. Did Mr. Comey also memorialize conversations he had with key Justice Department officials? Maybe the day after Loretta Lynch meets with Bill Clinton on the tarmac. I'd like to know, did he memorialize conversations he had with key Justice Department officials uh, the day they decided to give Cheryl Mills and Heather Samuelson immunity deals? Uh, yeah, I'd like to I know mean, if those do, things do took think, place, too. Do you think it's possible that he will turn over some of those memoranda uh, to Congress, and do you think he will testify? Well, let's hope so. I mean, uh, Chairman Chaffetz has already asked that Mr. Comey come testify in front of the Oversight Committee next week, and we had better get... The, Context and consistency are important. Did Mr. Comey only memorialize conversations in and about President Trump? Yeah. Or did he also memorialize conversations about other equally or certainly big important issues like the Clinton investigation, like the IRS? How about the fact that when they made a decision not to prosecute Lois Lerner or anyone in the IRS targeting scandal, yeah. were there conversations that were memorialized about those decisions? That's something we need to know because if there weren't, and it was only about conversation he had with President Trump, then that should tell us something. And that's, that's something we as a Congress and the American people need to know. Well, I, I think that, you know, there are people on the Democratic side who would be hard-pressed to say that Comey was a total a Democratic operative hack, that, you know, he did enough damage to both parties 
in you know his own personal grandstanding that uh, you know I, I don't necessarily I, I think you'd be hard pressed to make a case that that he was a total leftist. But well, I want to ask you about something that uh, one okay. of your fellow Republican colleagues in the Freedom Caucus, uh, Congressman Justin Amash from Michigan, I asked uh, Congressman Massey about this yesterday. He said that if the contents of that memo are in fact true, the one where uh, President Trump reportedly asked then FBI Director Comey to back off the Flynn investigation, is that in itself impeachable? Look, Justin is a, is a good friend and, a, and a, a member of the Freedom Caucus, but no one's talking about that. What we're talking about is getting the facts, getting the full context, finding out if this was consistent with how Mr. Comey conducted his affairs at the, at the FBI all along on other important issues as I talked about before. That's what we're focused on doing and to, to uh, for Democrats to be suggesting impeachment is just it yeah. makes no sense to me. We need to get the facts and understand. I, I want to know uh, I, I want to know what conversations he may have memorialized on other issues as yeah. well. I think and that it's, will it's give us a lot of context. Serious and it, it has the potential to tear the country apart. So I think it's, it's very important for both parties uh, to be as unemotional and analytic as they can right. right now and stop engaging in hyperbole because there are some very serious issues still out Standing that you're absolutely right, we have to get to the bottom of and we need answers for. Kennedy, consistency is important. I, I, I was the one who did the legislation calling for a special prosecutor in the IRS targeting scandal. Yeah. Remember the name Barbara Bosserman? Barbara mm -hmm. Bosserman wound up being the lead agent on the IRS investigation. She was a max out contributor to President Obama's campaign. No, no, we don't need a special prosecutor under those circumstances, but we do now? Really? So consistency and context matter a lot. That's one of the things we need to find out as this investigation moves forward, both on the congressional side and from uh, the, the special counsel side of, of Mr. Mueller. All right, Congressman Jim Jordan, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it.